Doc, what are your thoughts on a carnivore diet? I've got this question like crazy because you see it right now, there's a massive debate about it. So what I'm gonna do is this. I'm gonna go through the benefits and limitations from my viewpoint. I believe that they're quite reasonable and understand and, so, and back based on things. But here's number one. Limitations is there's not a lot of studies. But here's what happens. Do you know why there's not a lot of studies when it does come to nutrition, and herbs and things like that? It's not patentable. You can't make a billion dollars off it or a trillion dollars of selling supplement over 10 years that way. So it never will be. That's why you gotta get government out of any kind of form of healthcare. The reason why medicine is so big on the studies that they can control because they use it as a weapon of authority. Number two, the reason why I believe that people get massive benefit right away, it's the great form of elimination diet. It really is. I know people that have anything, everything from IgE to IgE to IgA, G allergies, to specific foods. Meats are not really highly allergic foods. There's some at least with the exception of eggs. Now I'll give you a little anecdotal but also studied evidence. Does anybody know why in history people are so allergic to eggs? You take an undigested form of egg and get it into the body too quickly so the immune system says you don't belong there. And there's an inflammatory response, okay? Foreign protein. But here's the point. If I wanna give the body what it needs to repair and rebuild and restore, which that's the wellness way principles, I need to give it what it needs. If I can get it from plant sources, I get it from animal sources, I'm gonna do it. When you look at elimination, diet when it comes to it this way when you do eat a carnivore if you want to see some change and reduce inflammation first move a little bit towards higher protein foods which would seem a little bit more carnivore but we're gonna get there so when a person starts carnivore and you're gonna have less chance of triggering your immune system if you have a less variety of proteins that can be very inflammatory and that's why you see them and they move towards more of a hamburger meat steak diet that way it's just a great elimination diet it really is so therefore what happens is it's a great way to eliminate things that you just don't want to eat but still get food okay because a lot of people say doc i just react to everything so therefore i'm just gonna eat nothing and fast well that's not gonna last that long so the carnivore diet does make it very easy to do an elimination diet, which there is benefit from it and you'll see it. A limitation now again, it lacks specific vitamins, especially vitamin C. And vitamin C for a human cannot be made. We have to eat it. You know, there are mammals and there are animals and there are things that actually can make their own vitamin C. For example, have you ever seen a lion in a safari eating an orange? No, because they can make their own vitamin C, okay? Is there vitamin C within a meat? Well, and muscle meats, it's very low to kind of not traceable that way. So therefore they do have an argument there. But vitamin C, once again, is very low because if we look, here we go. The better form of meat you have is better. The recommended daily intake of vitamin C for an adult is, once again, 75 to 90 milligrams. A very high quality pasteurized beef contains as much as 2.5 milligrams of vitamin C per 100 grams of meat, but this is the exception, not the rule. Do you know what they're talking about? Do you understand corn and soy and non-pasteurized animals have less nutrients. So that's why people say, well, grass-fed doesn't really make a difference. Yes, it does. It actually has more of the things that you need. It's more nutrient dense. It's more nutrient dense. So that's why people say, well, farm-raised with corn, soy doesn't really matter. This is, yes, it does. Your quality of your food does matter. It does have a higher concentration of all vitamins and minerals, even when the ones that are really low. That's why if you look at the most highest vitamin C based foods, and it's really true, I agree with this. These are really good predictors of vitamin C. If you look, you don't really see any animal based products because you look, red peppers are listed as 95. Once again, it gives you about 106% of your daily volume that you needed. But you know what some of this? There is one food that has 700 milligrams per cup. Do you guys want to guess what it is? Sauerkraut. Why don't they put the sauerkraut on there? Sauerkraut is so nutrient dense. Another limitation of benefit. Here we go. It's an easy way to get your essential proteins. See, so eating a carnivore diet, it's much easier. It's not the only way. It's just so much easier to get your essential proteins. And we're going to cover that in just a short time. I'm going to show you some of the most important proteins that you need and how it's very easy to get it from animal-based products and even an easier way to get certain specific animal-based products. And yes, can you get it from plant-based? It's just hard. It is, guys. Now, um, and I'll tell you right now, my favorite, favorite plant-based protein still comes from hemp. It's one of the greatest plants, I believe, on the planet. Fantastic. Also, there's multiple ways to get it. I just like hemp. Um, you could do hemp hearts. It's a very simple way of doing it. Can you just eat hemp and get all your essential proteins? No. And once again, uh, hemp hearts are, are raw, so therefore it's a little, it's hard to bind on that fiber. It makes it a little bit more difficult, but hemp has a little bit more available 
uh, essentials, but also all the complex proteins. But there's a lot of insufficiency of specific vitamins and minerals when it does come to the carnivore diet. So there's specific minerals and vitamins that we do miss. And here's some of them right here. Vitamin C. Now, Durang, animal products are known to have great B vitamins, but there's specific B vitamins that it's getting a little low on, especially thiamine B1. But you'd be surprised that B1 in a carnivore diet is kind of deficient. So is K, vitamin K. Now, there is a food that is wonderfully supplied with K2. See, K1 is used for clotting, but K2 is used for a lot of calcium putting in the right places of the body. Because if you have osteoporosis or you have osteopenia, if you have any kind of bone sprain, any kind of degenerative aspect, or you have to have calcification in places, if you have calcification atherosclerosis, the number one food that you need to eat is sauerkraut. The cabbage from sauerkraut is less bioavailable, less nutrient, unless the bug ate it first. And we call that process what? Fermentation. See, so that's why I can never just be like a straight meat eater, because I want the other meat animals, like bacteria, and then cows, and pigs, and lambs, and stuff, they eat that stuff, and, and prep it for me, and then I'll just eat them, okay? And that's kind of what happens. If we look, manganese, lithium, magnesium, and if you're just eating muscle meats, you're gonna be deficient in certain things. Carnival people are, are mad at me right now because I'm saying, because I had a lot of carnival people watching the show where they come talk about muscle meats and things like that, and I'm like, oh, no, 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 there are some limitations. Why can't we throw something else in? And trust me, I'm not joking, guys, for all you carnivore loving people. When I first started with a sick patient, I would say, just eat some meat, because you eliminate so many things from your diet, you are less inflammatory. But if you keep on doing that for a long period of time, you're gonna be deficient in some of these vitamins and trace minerals that eventually can lead to illness too. So what I decided to do for all parties, so I'm gonna get some love back from the carnivores, I'm gonna get some love back from the plant-based people, so here we go. I compared some of the major nutrients, vitamins, and minerals. As you can see, some of the plant-based stuff has more than red meat does. But you're gonna see that sometimes the plant and the muscle meats are deficient in all things. But as you can see, I grayed out the most important superfood in the world organ meats. And look at the comparison, even in vitamin C. So let's go to vitamin C. See halfway down there, seven milligrams of vitamin C in an apple. Six milligrams, none really in red meat, only traces of it really, but 27 milligrams in an organ. And different organs have higher vitamin C and higher mineral concerts and higher vitamin concerts. See, there's certain organ systems that you can eat that will have high minerals and vitamins. So I tell people is this, a person would say, okay doc, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm carnivore. Okay, cool, cool, can, can you be carnivore plus for me? Just a little plus, you know what I'm saying? Throw a little bit of organ meat in there, please. I uh, got a lot of stress, can you throw a little adrenals in there? Um, you got Can you throw a little liver in there? How about a little, oh, you got a heart problem, you throw a little uh, cardiovascular heart in there and I want to get the coenzyme Q10 thing. Yeah, doc, I could do that. See, it's kind of cool. So what you're doing is you're trying to adapt to what their needs are that way. For the unedited, full-length, unapologetic content, go to our website to watch ADP shows. Hit that subscribe button and join our community for the most amazing content like this every day.